Wow. It's just so amazing to think the beginning of last year to, to where we are now. And I just want to take a moment and acknowledge this community because we have really grown. I don't know if everybody's, and you can't see it on Zoom, everybody that's here. But my goal last year was that we hit 50 people by December. And guess what? We did it. We did it. So, and last year, uh, or the year before, 2022, we were uh, quite a bit in the red. And I think this year, we managed to break even. And that is going back full time, uh, having more musicians. And this year, we're grateful that we've increased the little bit of their pay <laughs> to accommodate all the gas charges. And, you know, so that's, that's something to really acknowledge for ourselves. Sometimes I find, I don't know if anybody else here has that, but I can dwell on the negative. I can dwell on, oh, this didn't happen or that didn't happen. Oh, this technology, I'm still running around getting <laughs> text messages from two. We can't see you, we can't hear you. But I think we're, we're getting better and better every day. And I know that the right person is gonna show up and say, let me take over your technology for you. <laughs> just like if anybody's out there praying or thinking about things, just plant that little seed. That is always wonderful. So I had a talk planned, and then at 6.30 this morning, I changed my mind. <laughs> Isn't that a woman's prerogative? I don't know. Or, or a person's, anybody's prerogative. But I was inspired. This is an old science of mind. I don't have the newest version out with me yet. But I don't know if you know this, but the Science of Mind magazine has been in publication for 97 years. 97 years, well, they're, yes, right? And so they are hoping to go another, to get to 100, right? And um, they're on Facebook, they're on, so I don't know if anybody gets this in the mail or does anything or goes to, I've, Indigo sometimes have, has a, of the new one, Ah, I was there the other day and they didn't, I tried to go into Indigo's for Jill and pick up the new one and it wasn't there yet. They just had the last months. But they, they've, they're they trying to cut costs. They're doing things, making it a little more efficient. So they're doing two um, magazines in one. So there would only be six, uh, six issues every year, right? Because that's the word I'm looking for. But what I, what I liked about uh, this magazine um, there's so many things I like about it, and even the old one, is that on page 10 of every one, we have what we believe. And now this is, I was fortunate to be gifted by Reverend Terry what Ernest Holmes wrote as what I believe. And this came back to, turned into the, the, kind of our principles, our guiding principles of to what we believe. And that's what I like to think about it is what is it rather than I, what is it we? That brings us all into the collective because there is only one thing. So I'm going to read to you the first one. Okay, it's a mouthful, people. So just bear with me. Bear with me. We believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. Right, so what does that mean? What does that mean? It is that everything, every blade of grass, every sentient being, everything is all one thing. And we are all encompassed in that. There is nothing separate. And as we're going through this world, and I don't know if anybody remembers this, but on December 31st, which was only, what, a long time ago? <laughs> Last year, when I asked everybody to write out 
uh, a prayer. What is it that you would like prayer for? And everybody filled up my our prayer box for the practitioners. But as I was going through each one and taking them into my heart, it was just this, the overall theme was a prayer of healing. Prayer of healing for our world, prayer of healing for communities, a prayer of healing for family, a prayer of healing for self. It was all there. And so it got me thinking this morning as I was glancing through them and changing my, my talk a little bit, because it is a new day. That was the total of it. And on this new day, I believe that anything is possible. I believe anything is possible. And that is the affirmation for this week. So the second part that I didn't quite finish here yet is this one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absor absorbed by its creation. Okay, what not absorbed, what does that mean? What if you use it as different as thinking of that, the, the divine always creates and recreates. It's always continuous. So that means that it's not absorbing itself. It's still more to create out there. And that is each, just look around this room. Each one of you are an expression of that divine oneness, of that divine. So if we look at it as the divine creates continuously. And then he ends with, the manifest universe is the body of, the, of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. So again, when we know ourselves, we know God. When we know another person, we know God. But the truth is, the only person that we can really know intimately is ourself. So when, but when we know ourselves, that is when we're in tune, when we're in touch with that divine source, that source that is all things. So luckily, I'm teaching a class coming up, and I got to reread, okay, this is an old version of this thing called you. So it reminded me of so many things in, in this book. It's just a little bit sometimes simpler than the full big book of the science of mind. But one thing he says in here is your soul belongs to the universe. Your mind is the outlet through which the creative intelligence of the universe seeks fulfillment. This is the starting point for investigating the meaning of those impulses, those longings and desires which accompany us through our life. You may accept that the source through which they come is real. You may accept that the universe is filled with a divine and infinite presence. Perhaps that infinite is yourself. Perhaps that infinite is yourself. Isn't that beautiful? Knowing that we all have that power right here, right now to make changes. Because I don't know about you, because reading those prayers, I'm thinking people are facing challenges. So what do I talk about? How do I not gloss over the things that are happening in the world right now? How do we deal with it? And especially there seems to be are we divided or are, there, are we united? So I like to go on the united side. And one of the, the other thing is the words that we use for oneness, that can be anything. I mean, I'm using the word God here through Ernest Holmes, but you can use divine, you can use living intelligence, you can use universal source. What are, what are some of your names for the divine? Does anybody have anything else? Spirit, higher power, energy. Oh, Jill's favorite, the friend within. The friend within. And isn't that true? The friend that is right there all the time with us. It is always there. So in the next chapter, chapter two, he says, you know, if there's these things that they're 
we're all one, everything, our thoughts change our life. If we all know this and we believe it, so he says, why then, if these things are true, is the world still impoverished? Why is it mentally and physically ill and apparently unable to become unified? He says, this is the great question. Why and why and why? Unless this question is adequately answered and its meaning increases applied to human conduct, there is danger that the world may destroy its vast system of misconceptions and be compelled to begin over again. That kind of sounds gloomy, doesn't it, a little bit? <laughs> but isn't this amazing that he wrote this back in well, was the original was 1926? But it, it's still applied to this world today when we look at all the things. So circling back to what I thought about for today, and I thought, okay, what is needed is healing with the people, the prayers, healing of the earth, the things that everybody asks for. So I thought, what is the best way that we can do that? And I wish I had all the answers as I flip papers away. I don't need it, it's okay. And thinking, okay, well, we're oneness. So if we're oneness, so if we start shifting the way that we think, if we start shifting our beliefs here as the center of spiritual living, White Rock as each individual, then maybe we can start rippling out. We can start here and move through. And I have a great story of an example on this. I was listening to um, my mentor, one of my mentors, luckily I have three, because I need it to tell you, is that um, they are out of New Vision Center in Phoenix. And so her, she has a co-minister, Reverend Karen Einhorst, and she was telling a story about how every day she would come into their center, they have their own, pla their own building, and there was these unhoused people there. And so these unhoused people, they just had one of those scooters, you know, they're electric, and um, they said to her, you know, would it be okay if we plugged in and just charged our scooter? Because this is the only way we can get around. And sometimes we need electricity for our phones. And so they talked about it as a group. And they said, yes, of course. Come plug in, do these things. So time went by. And like, you know, they, every day they would all come in and then these people started to take the center, the space as their own. So if there's people who would show up that weren't really supposed to be there at certain times, they would scurry them away. <laughs> they, would, they kind of took on that protector role of it. And as they move through the years, like we're talking about 10 years have gone by now and they've been doing this and living through. And then finally, Reverend Karen came in one day and she noticed something different about them. And they were standing not beside just a scooter, but they had a car. Yeah, yeah they had a car. So she went over and approached them and said, something seems a little different here. What is it? And they said, well, we decided after listening he to you here for 10 years or however long it was, that, you know, it's time for us to clean up and take responsibility for our lives. So they went and they start to get clean. They ended up getting some money in and working and they were able to buy this car to live in now rather than just on the street. And the best part is, is that they said to the her, and we want to give you this $20 to pay for the electricity that you so generously gave to us as a thank you. I have God bumps or divine bumps. And she gladly received, gladly received the money. Because my first thought when I heard this story is like, okay, you didn't take the money, did you? Like, come on. And she said, I know a lot of you out there are thinking, don't take that money. But the thing is, she allowed them to be in that law of abundance, in that law of circulation. So how beautiful was that, that she said, no, I received it. 
And how often does good come to us and we push it away? We don't necessarily receive it or take it in with us. And she said to her, her congregation, she said, I wish that each one of you, as I took that money, could see the look on those people's faces. They were so grateful and overjoyed that I took the money because they were able to participate in that. So that's a little side story, but I thought it was such a beautiful demonstration of oneness. Reverend Karen saw them as one. She was looking at them through the eyes of the divine all the way through. And maybe it took a little longer than maybe they wanted, she wanted, anybody wanted, but they got there to, for themselves. They're on that journey. And that is our fourth tenet, is we're here to walk each other home. And I just think that's such a marvelous demonstration. So what I thought of, oh gosh, maybe I didn't. <laughs> well, hmm. I was going to do something today, but maybe I'm not because I ended up. How, how, is, how does a minister maybe use too many words ever happen? Does it ever happen? But that's okay. We will, we'll save it for next week. We'll save it for next week. So oneness and knowing that love is all there is. Love is is the self-givingness of the universal spirit through its desire to express itself in terms of creation. And that is the key, key here. Like I like to say we're the, the little center with a big heart. And I think that's because we express that love so genuinely to each other and walk each other home. I'm always so grateful when uh, we have our after chats and everybody stays and that we can converse and express what is it that we want to learn more of in this time. So let's go back to our dear friend Ernie. I know, right? He says, standing between spirit, your physical body, body and external affairs, there's a sum total of your thinking believing, and feeling. Perhaps more than anyone understands or believes, the sum total of every man's thought is a mirage, of a, a mirage of the ages. It would be well to think of this way that you may not condemn yourself. So what he's talking about there, that mirage of ages, is there is ways of, so going back to that question, right? Like how do we change this? How do we, if the, these bad things in the world are these things that we deem and judge as bad, how do we change that? And we know that our thinking is there because it's what he calls race consciousness. It's those thoughts, those biases that continue on throughout life that we unconsciously accept so it's when we start to challenge those race consciousness and think about how can we do things differently. On Monday is Martin Luther King Day in the United States. And so they will be celebrating that, that person that going that next space of social justice. And I think that's the piece. He challenged race consciousness. He challenged those beliefs. And at the end of the month, we'll be doing on our social media again. My dearest person who does my social media with me doesn't know this yet, <laughs> but I'm letting her know. But we've done it in the past and I'll help. Is the 64 days of for, oh gosh, nonviolent. Oh, why am I forgetting? The season of nonviolence, that's what it is. It starts on the day of Gandhi's birthday and the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated, and that's January 30th. So it goes for 64 days, and every day they give us a, uh, a little tidbit of something that we can do to make this world better. So I think that is what Ernest Holm was saying. He said, the last thing I want to, I just love this piece too. He, when we said not to condemn yourself, he said, we are like everyone else, an infant crying in the night. 
You're like everyone else, an infant crying in the night. There's something trying to be made whole, something with a deep yearning for security, a deep and unspeakable longing for love, for protection, and for peace. But the mind is filled with the accumulated doubts of the ages, that vast abyss of doubt, fear and uncertainty. We're standing between you and your desires. He says, here is where the science of mind can aid you, where your intellect may reach through to unite with your inspiration, where the conscious use of the laws of mind may break down the barriers which hide the face of love from the fact of unlovingness. If God created you after their own nature, and there is nothing else that they could have made you out of, the thing that you are already after is already here. It is already here. It is within you. The only thing that stands between you and it are those accumulated thoughts and beliefs and emotions of the ages. So he goes on to say lots more. I could just read this book out to you all day and it would be amazing. So next week we'll work a little bit. I was going to do a fear to faith exercise, but we'll work on it next week and continue this on because I think this is a longer conversation. It's a longer conversation about how can we start shifting? How do we shift from that fear base to that love base? Where do we go with it? And two, why, why is it important? Why is it important? And one of the prayers that was um, put in the, in the box was to pray for our young people, that they are loved and cared for, especially the ones that are vulnerable. And we have a young person there. Sorry, this is probably boring for him, unfortunately. <laughs> but we so appreciate you being here. But it is so for them to move forward in this world, the next generation that's coming up, and the ones that are the generation even after, if we start making those shifts, we know that it is, they're, they're going to be the placeholders for us. And if we look around the room, this, our demographics here may be a little bit getting, no, how do I say this? I am uh, uh, mature. mature. Thank you, Judy. That is a great way. We are maturing in our wisdom of life. So it's, you know, how can we, we question why is it important? It's important for our young people, but it's important at how we look at others. It's important how we can shift and change the world and how we can heal ourselves. Because that's where he's saying that it starts, that Ernest is saying it starts here at home. And this is a big home. We're so lucky we have such an amazing family to walk this path with and try out these little things that we're talking about here. And knowing that we're here to support each other and to hold each other's hand as we walk through this. So there's so much more to say, but I think today that will be it. <laughs> you know, again, minister can always talk on forever and ever. But let's take this into this moment and close with a prayer. Oh, I brought my little bell. I'm going to use it today. So knowing there is one life, one love, one universal divine mind, that universal spirit, that creative spark, that flame that lives in each of us, knowing that there is no separation, that oneness is here. Oneness is the infinite reality that exists in, through, and as all of things. And oneness is not sameness. 
as we stand here in this room and on Zoom, we can look around and know that each one of us are that expression of that divine, and that each one of us has a gift to bring to this world, that each one of us has that unique way of being to express kindness, to express love, to express all that there is in life. And knowing that each of us are all abundant, there is no lack. It is all right here, right now, that endless possibility of the divine. So today, I claim that. I claim the love, the joy, the awe, and the beauty of the world knowing that I am here to express that divine as the rose is here to express beauty or the tree or the grass. Everything is here to express. There is no thing that is there that is not creative and expressing. So I allow these words to go into that law of mind with gratitude with joy, with love. And I release any fear, any doubt that the world can shift. I know that it can. I say these words with conviction. I know it. I feel it. I express it. So I let it go. I let it be. And ask you to join me in saying, and so it is.